Good evening, good evening, good evening, and welcome to Compassion Christian Center TNT Tuesdays around the Word of God. I'm Pastor Marisa, and I'm flying solo tonight. I am, I am, and it looks as if I'm only on um, one platform, which is YouTube. So what I need you to do, I need you to contact your friends and family and followers and let them know to join us tonight on YouTube, not on Facebook, but on YouTube, go ahead and join me in the chat. Put it out there that the church is on the screen tonight and we welcome you. Join us on um, Facebook tonight. I probably should um, send a text. Let me see. Um, I should send out um, a text for you all to find us. Hello, someone's here. Good evening, welcome. Glad that you are here. Let us let me know who you are and where you're watching from. Glad you're here. Go ahead and let all of those know to join us here on the YouTube page. We are not live on Facebook tonight. Join us right here on the YouTube page. I'm gonna ask if they send out a text. Welcome, welcome, welcome to Compassion Christian Center in Bakersfield, California. It's Thursday, April the 11th, and we are glad you are here. Go ahead and make sure you tag a friend, make sure you subscribe, make sure you like. This is how we build Jesus brand. Go ahead and join us. I'm going to ask them to send out um, text to join TNT live on YouTube tonight. Yes, thank you so much. Thank you so much for helping us get the word out. We are here and I thought I saw, welcome, 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 hello. I'm trying to see your comments. Um, can I see comments? Hello and welcome, glad that you are here. Are you commenting? I'm trying to see who you are and where you are commenting from. We're glad that you are here. Welcome to Compassion Christian Center. That's who we are and where we're located in Bakersfield, California. And I'm Pastor Maurice, and I'm glad that you are here tonight. Exciting times. How many of you know that um, the church will collaborate with city, county, uh, government to help um, serve the people of God in the community, serve the people, period, in the community. But well, we're glad to announce that we are collaborating with the city of Bakersfield and we have been given oversight of the community garden that is on the corner of 4th Street and I, E-Y-E, and I um, welcome and invite you to join us this Saturday, the 13th, for a special project day. We're going to be doing a special project in the community garden, and we need all hands on deck. So if you'd like to get your hands in the soil, if you'd like to be outside, we invite you to be there um, Saturday. The hours are from 9 to 3, and you determine which hours you'd like to be there, which hours you'd like to serve. But we want to come in and serve the community. Um, for many years, the community garden on the corner of 4th and I um, was named Seeds of inspiration. The city has um, granted us the opportunity to change the name if we, if we like, and we did. It is now known, known as Compassion Community Garden. Go ahead, put it in the chat. Compassion Community Garden, and we are over excited about what this space is going to do for the community and so this um our projects this week we will be putting down our weed fabric our textiles we will be spreading mulch in our um garden and we will be taking down um some wooden signs we are excited to also partner with the bakersfield college foundation and uh bakersfield college foundation is going to be putting up our wrought iron fence around um that property it's just going to be beautiful how many you know that God says that, you know, he makes oasis in the deserts. And so um, where there are food deserts, you know, he brings abundance, right? He said, you'll live in houses you didn't build. You'll drink from um, vineyards you didn't, you didn't plant, right? God always does things in abundance and excess, excess. And so we want to do that. We want the people of the community to feel cared for and to know that there is a beautiful space uh, just for them where they can grow their own food and eat from their own labor. It's just going to be beautiful. So I invite you to meet me this Saturday, April the 13th, 
um, on the corner of 4th and I Street in Bakersfield, California from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. We're excited that you would do just that. Well, don't forget about Pastor Roland. Pastor Roland, yes, he does. He teaches amazing uh, master class um, from his book, Quiet Time. Uh, the Lord has given him, of course, that particular subject for the entire world. I don't care if you meditate. I don't care um, what religion you're in. Every single human being has got to have a quiet time. And it's a time where we get quiet and we get still and we can hear from the Lord. Not only do we speak to him, but what's most important is that we hear from him, right? And so I want to invite you. You see there on April 8th, he did his master class, um, um, Quiet Time. He does it um, every first Monday of the month. So if you want to be a part of that, you see how to register. You just go to www.rbmint.com and register for the free one hour masterclass. It will be a benefit to your life. Remember in the body of Christ, everything we do is to be a benefit to others. I love what Pastor Roland always says. God doesn't bless us for us. He always blesses us for others, right? So whatever he um, allows us to do, tells us to do, instructs us to do is always for others. And so we want you to take um, part. You don't have to be a member of our ministry. Um, we don't even have to know who you are. You don't have to be in the city of Bakersfield or the state of California. You can be anywhere in the world and join um, the one wonderful master class. And so we want to make sure that we um, extend that to you and you know about it and you can take part in it. Ah, glad, glad to see you coming on. Hey, Miss Key, glad to see you. Glad, oh, thank you. Likewise, hey, beautiful. Glad to see you on. Glad to see you. Yes, please share now. Um, those of you who know that you have friends, family, followers who normally watch or um, engage on TNT on our Facebook um, platform, let us let them know we're all over here tonight. For whatever reason, I couldn't get on Facebook, so let them know we're all over here tonight. We are on. The church is on the screen. Yes, glad that you are here. Um, and so that's that. Well, in our ministry this morning, <clears throat> we had a believer go home to be with the Lord, Minister Peggy Williams, um, at 4.06 a.m. this morning, went home to be with the Lord. And someone may say, what do you mean went home to be with the Lord? As a believer in the Lord Jesus Christ, we believe that our home is not here, but our home is with the Father. And so when we take our last breath in this body, the Bible says that this body, this shell, it goes back to the dust from which it was made. But my spirit man, the real me, and my soul, they go to live with the Father forever. And so um, Sister Peggy transitioned this morning. We want every single person to continue to pray for her husband of like 30 years, Ellis Williams, her children, her grandchildren. You know, um, we understand where they are, but it does not mean that we will not miss their physical presence. I think that's one one thing um, about the human experience is that when another human goes on, we who are left behind, we miss their physical pe uh, presence, the way they smell, the way you know they use their face, their facial expressions, you know, um, the way they love, the way they did things, and so that is the hard part for us. Who are still here. So we want to make sure that we are praying and standing with and, and anyone else you know who has lost, lost a loved one, let's be kind, let's be supportive uh, because it is a transition. Anyone who's lost a loved one, you know that, right? You know that. And so, um, but we declare that God is still who he says he is. And that's what I want to focus on tonight. God is still, and I think that's what I titled, titled this tonight. He still is. He still, and then I think I put three dots, you fill in the blank. He still, whatever you need him to be. He is still who he said he is, right? And so I want to focus on that. And I think that's important because a lot of times when things happen and we don't get the outcome that we were believing for, we don't get the outcome we expected, sometimes our faith can be shaken. Our trust in who he is can be shaken. But I want to declare tonight that God is still who he declared he was in the word of God. Yes, yes, yes. I see, I see you. I see you, Key. Yes, I see you. He is still a provider. He is still a supplier. He is still a healer. He is still a confidant. He is still a friend. He is still a mother to the motherless, a father to the fatherless. He is still 
whatever he declared himself to be in the word of God. Yes, yes, yes. I see. You. Yes. So I encourage you all, those of you who come on in. Yes, he is still a healer. And I wanted to declare that tonight because here at our um, local ministry, we've had some just recently some dynamic women transition to be with the Lord, Minister Tommy Hollis, and now Minister Peggy Williams. And when you have um, believers in the Lord Jesus Christ, and when you have people who believe the word of God, and like I said, you don't get that outcome of healing. You don't want that faith to be shaken. So I want to focus on who he said he is tonight. I greet you with Jesus' joy. Love you. Glad that you were here. Let everybody know this is where we are. And let's get into the word of God. Father, we thank you and we praise you for another day. We thank you, Father God, for all of your goodness and all of your mercy. Father, your word declares that this morning we woke up to new mercies. And so we say thank you, Father. We thank you and praise you for allowing us to fulfill every assignment that we did today. Father God, we thank you and praise you, Lord God, for being with us. And so today, Holy Spirit, breathe on this time that we're together. Holy Spirit, bring out what it is that we need to know and what we need to focus on. Father, tonight, we look full into your face and we look for answers from you. We love you. We trust you. We declare you are still who you said you are. In the mighty name of Jesus, amen and amen. All right, let's jump in. I wanted to make <clears throat> these declarations tonight. And so, um, like I just I'll share with you all in our ministry, we had um, two wonderful, amazing, amazing women, amazing mothers, amazing wives, amazing, amazing friends, amazing girlfriends. These were just amazing women who have gone on um, and now transition to be with the Lord. And I wanted to declare who God is tonight. And I want to remind you of who he is. And um, it's during these times, um, some people say, you know, you can't question God. Well, if you can't ask God a question, he can't be God. He is God, right? And he is strong enough, powerful enough, um, transparent enough for his children to ask questions, right? And so it's no no problem with asking a, a question. It's no problem with asking God, you know, what happened um, and allowing God um, to minister to us. I, I feel that these are the times when I need God to minister to me the most. When I'm standing for healing, when I'm standing asking um, for a miracle um, when I'm standing to see the results that have been promised in his word and um, it goes what seems to be you know against what his word says these are the times where I need God to minister to me the most and um, put it in the chat uh, what are your what are your feelings what what do you think um, in regards to that um, these are those times. And so I wanted to remind us as a believer in the Lord Jesus Christ, what it is that we have um, that we resort to, what it is that we have that we lean on, what it is that we have that we must uh, continue to wholeheartedly believe. And because we believe, we must continue to say put in the chat continue to say when we go through times like this one of the things that the enemy will try to do is to um, stop us from saying the word of God to get us to um, stop believing the word of God or in God himself. So I want to encourage us tonight, right? As I, um, I want to encourage you, as I encourage myself um, in the word of the Lord. Our encouragement comes um, from the word of the Lord. Uh, and I'm looking right now, even for, even for the word of the Lord tonight, that we'll take our um, encouragement from that our hope is built in, right? Our hope can't be built in the outcome. Our hope is built in God himself. 
our hope is built in God himself. So when um, challenges come, and they will, the Bible says in this life we will suffer um, tribulations, trials, and those type of things. And so, but it says, be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. So believer, be of good cheer. Father God, through his son Jesus, has overcome the world. And if he said it, it is so. And this is what we rely on. And so we remind him of his word. Let me see. We remind him of his word. Many of you have uh, received our God's Promises book, our gifts from you. And you can go right to that book. And that book is, um, it is uh, laid out to uh, for topics. And so you can go to the topic of healing and find healing scriptures. You can go to the topic of finances and find financial scriptures. You can go to the topic of loneliness or um, depression, whatever the case is, and find the word of God that promises us what the will of God is regarding those topics, right? And um, I want to, I want to do some of that tonight. Um, I want to do um, some of that tonight. And so when we experience um, these times, we have to remind ourselves who we are. Hey, Miss Rochelle Grimes, hello, hello, hello. We remind ourselves um, who we are, but not who we are because of who our parents are, but we remind ourselves of who we are because of who he is, right? And um, one of the things is that we have to declare the word of God over our lives. Um, and did, did you know that we have to decree and declare the word of God over who we are, what he says about us. Mm. Mm, mm, mm. And so tonight, I just want to reinforce, do you know, if you are a believer in the Lord Jesus Christ, if you receive him as your Lord and Savior, that you are a son of God. Um, uh, uh, despite your behaviors, if you receive the Lord Jesus, you are a son of God. You and I have been saved by grace, not by our works, not how, um, how many um, commandments we can keep, but we have been saved by grace through faith. So uh, Jesus extended the grace and we accepted it by faith. You and I have been saved, or we can use another word, you and I have been rescued, rescued from eternal damnation, and we have been rescued, right, from the hand of the enemy. Oh, God, I want you guys to start putting some of this in the chat. We have been rescued from the hand of the enemy, and we've been rescued by grace. You and I, have been born, or we can use this word, we have been reborn by incorruptible seed. You and I, when I say you and I, I'm talking to those of you who have received Jesus, the finished work of what Jesus did on that cross, the shedding of his blood, um, the, the, um, uh, the nails in his hands, the nails in his feet, what Jesus did on the cross, he executed a plan, glory to God, that would buy us back or redeem us from the enemy after Adam has sold us to the enemy. Thank you, Father. And if you have believed in what Jesus has done, you have been redeemed from um, by the blood of Jesus and you are now reborn by an incorruptible seed. What does the word mean? Um, I see it. What does the word mean of incorruptible? It cannot be corrupted. What you and I have been reborn into, we've been reborn by a seed that cannot be corrupted. Who was that seed? Jesus was the seed. He was um, the perfect lamb of God. He was a sacrifice without spot, without blemish, without sin. He was an incorruptible seed. And when he gave his life and when he shed his blood, he bought me back. I've been bought back by an incorruptible seed. Absolutely. You and I have been bought back by the blood of the lamb. Yes, in Christianity, 
in our relationship with Father God, we talk about this blood. It was a pure blood. It was an untainted blood. It was a blood that was not blemished by any act of sin. And when Jesus shed his blood, he brought me back. Put in the chat. He bought me back. Yes, there was a price paid for you and I. I have to remind myself today as I experience another mighty, powerful woman of God transitioning, I believe, um, before time because God says he'll satisfy us with long life. But when these things happen, I have to remind myself of what the word of God says about you and I as believers. Thank you, Father God. Hallelujah. He brought me back. Do you know, as a believer in Jesus, you and I have been forgiven of sins, past, present, and future. When I have received Jesus, hallelujah, because I have received Jesus, I have been forgiven of my past, present, and future sins. Why is that so important? Because when the enemy comes in your ear, when the enemy comes in that thought life and says, oh, you know, you, you're not worthy. Um, you know what you've done. Your behaviors are not lining up. You're not cleaning up fast enough. You can remind the enemy, not by a thought, you remind the enemy with your words and you say, Jesus has forgiven me. I have been forgiven a past present and future sins. You better put in the chat tonight. You better declare the word of God. I am reminding myself of the word of God. I'm reminding you of the word of God. When we face these outcomes that we don't, that don't line up with the word of God, when we face these outcomes that are not in line with what we were believing God for, I have to remind myself what really matters hasn't changed. Mm -mm. Mm -mm, mm -mm. What really matters has not changed. Yes, make sure to hit your like and your share buttons. Why? Because we care, right? We share because we care. We care about other people getting the word of God. And just like we're experiencing something, and I'm saying we, I'm talking about a local body right now. This was our sister in the Lord, right? So because we are experiencing something right now, there are people all over the nation and all over the world who are experiencing something as well. And they need to be reminded no, no matter what's going on in this world, hallelujah, what really matters hasn't changed. And this is what we're going over tonight, right? We are a new creature in Christ Jesus. When I received Jesus Christ, he made me new. Put in the chat, I, he made me new. He made me new. I didn't make myself, you know, we said, oh, you look brand new. I see you, I see you looking brand new. That's all cute. But to be made brand new, that can only happen through the Lordship of Jesus Christ. When I received him, he made me a new creation, something that had never existed before. Um, the uh, old Marisa existed. And then when I received Jesus, he made me new. Yes, he made you new. And now we understand that we have been redeemed. There's that word again. We have been bought back from the curse of the law. There is a curse at work. Yes, there is. There is a curse at work. And if you don't understand the curse, let me explain it to you. The curse that is at work right now, um, that curse is the curse of sickness. Mm -hmm. Sickness is a curse. The curse of sickness, the curse of poverty, Poverty is a curse. There's nothing good about poverty. Poverty is a curse. And the second death is a curse. What do you mean, Pastor Marisa, by a second death? If I were to die and not have Jesus as my Lord and Savior, that's the second death. And that's the death that leads me into an eternal place, either eternal heaven or eternal hell, but I'm going somewhere eternally. But when I receive Jesus, Jesus breaks the curse off my life. Thank God. I've been redeemed. You better put in the chat. I've been bought back. Hallelujah. I've been bought back. Glory to God. By the blood of the lamb, I have been bought back from the curse. I'm no longer cursed. Put it in the chat. If you are a believer in Jesus Christ, you are no longer cursed. This is why we say that um, sickness, 
is far from us. Why can you say that? Because I'm no longer under the curse. Um, health is my covenant right. But just because it's your covenant right, as we're seeing, just because it's my covenant right does not mean it's going to be automatic. I have to fight. I have to enforce my covenant rights. And I hear this from the Lord because he sent it to me earlier. Marisa, get back to your confession. I'm telling you, I was going to say boys and girls, I thought I was talk, talking to kids at the school. Uh, believers, get back to your confession. Uh, you know, get back. Why? Because my confession enforces the promises. My confession enforces my covenant right. Get back to your confession. So sickness is far from me. I am healed of the Lord, resisting sickness and disease. Don't just say it when we see each other on Tuesdays and Thursday nights on the screen. Say it every single day. Declare it out of your mouth. Don't just think it. Don't just know it. It's good to know it. But because you know it, you got to say it. Because you know it, you have to say it. So we have been redeemed from the curse of the law. I am no longer cursed. I see you. I am no longer cursed. I'm no longer cursed with sickness. I'm no longer cursed with poverty. And I'm no longer cursed with the second death. And if sickness is in your life right now, you have a right to declare your healing and your health. If you are in poverty right now, you have a right to declare abundance. You have a right to declare more than enough. You have a right to declare better career, better job, more money. You have a right to declare your business to prosper. You have a right because Jesus came and uh, redeemed us from the curse of the law. Glory to God. He came. He redeemed us from the curse of the law. Uh, so tonight, you and I, we are the beloved of God. He loves us. He loves me. I am the beloved of God. Your children are your beloved. I don't care what they do, how they act, how they act up or whatever. Your children are your beloved. Well, guess what? You and I, as children of God, if you have received Jesus as Lord and Savior, you and I, as children of God, we are his beloved. And the scripture says, and because I'm operating by myself tonight, you guys, I can't put the scriptures in. And the scripture says that... <clears throat> Um, because you and I are his beloved, that he holds us in his hand. And the Bible says nothing will be able to take us out of his hand. Not earthquakes, not eclipses, not tornadoes, not hurricanes, not gun violence. Nothing will be able, not illness, nothing, will, not a bad relationship. Nothing will be able to take us out of his hand. We are his beloved. Every day you need to declare glory to God. You need to declare I am his beloved. I am the beloved of God. We are seated in heavenly places with Christ Jesus. You are not the scum of the earth. You are not the bottom of the totem pole. You are not, you know, forgotten. You are seated, the Bible says, in heavenly places. And the last time I looked, heavenly was above. We are seated in heavenly places, but we're not just seated there. We're seated in heavenly places by Christ Jesus. Jesus. You and I are seated in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Get back to your confession. I am seated in heavenly places. That That's not braggadocious. That's the word of God. That's truth. I am seated in heavenly places. Glory to God. I am a part of the royal priesthood. I got to say it today because I was shaken today when Minister Peggy went home to be the Lord said, Lord, we were believing you for something else. I am a part of the royal priesthood priesthood. I'm not normal. I'm not your run of the mill. I'm not. I am a part of the royal priesthood. So if you wonder why I talk the way I talk, because I'm a part of the royal priesthood. If you wonder why I act the way I act, because I'm a part of the royal priesthood. If you wonder why I live the way I live, because I am a part of the royal priesthood. If you wonder why I expect the way I expect, I am a part of the royal priesthood. Somebody put in the, in the chat, so am I, hallelujah, so am I. I am a member of the chosen generation. We are members of a chosen generation. The scripture says we are peculiar. 
We are chosen. We are his beloved. That's what he says about us. And no matter what happens, no matter what he faced, I'm really enjoying, glory to God. Thank you, King Jesus. I am really enjoying the series that Pastor Roland is in right now because I believe that in this time as um, we're getting closer to the second coming of who Jesus is, I believe as a believer in the Lord Jesus Christ, we really have to focus not only on the promises and the blessings, but we have to uh, focus on our responsibility as a believer. I have responsibilities as a believer. Paul said... Everything may be lawful for me to do, but it's not expedient because I have a responsibility as a believer. I have a responsibility in my responses as a believer. I have a responsibility in how I carry myself as a believer. I have a responsibility in what my declarations are as a believer. I have a responsibility to love as a believer, no matter what, no matter how you treat me, I have a responsibility to love. That's why at Compassion, we say we show love how, come on, put in the chat, to everyone, everywhere, every time. That is our responsibility. We didn't say we show love based on how people treat us. We show love if people are showing us love. We show love to everyone, everywhere, every time. Now, let me give you a caveat. Just because you're showing love doesn't mean you have to trust the person, right? I don't want you to, um, I don't want you to uh, mistake trust for love. I can love you even from a distance. I can love you and not trust you. So I am enjoying the series that Pastor Roland is teaching uh, tonight because we have responsibilities and believers in the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm telling you, look at what's happening in the earth. We got to get back to our confession, not just for the promises, but my confessions for my responsibilities. I am a responsible believer. I'm a responsible disciple. Yes, yes, we are uh, believers tonight. We are ambassadors for Christ and we are the light of the world. Now, the Bible says in John, the book of John, Jesus said, while I am here, he said, I am the light of the world. But when Jesus ascended, glory to God, guess who became the light of the world? You and I are the light of the world. And if you don't let the light of God shine, some people will never see the light. I have I had the privilege of teaching a course today um, for Bakersfield College, um, the satellite. And um, I had great students. It was great. Um and I'm teaching uh, to a group, it was a group of students who um, are experiencing a second chance in life. Uh, for many of them, they got off into addiction and bad behaviors and all these things for many years. And now they're at a place where they're making a change in their lives. And they're coming to understand, right, that there was someone somewhere that had to show them light had to show them a better place. They had been in their addiction so long, all they saw was dark. All they saw was spiraling out. And many of them ended up homeless. Many of them um, you know, were um, put out by family members and all these things. But now that they have seen the light and the light has come on, they are on an upward trajectory and it's beautiful. Believers, you and I are the light of the world and our lives are always on an upward trajectory. And I don't care what happens in our lives, what comes up, my life is always on an upward trajectory. Thank you, Lord Jesus. We are citizens of heaven. Our citizenship is in heaven. I know you live in America. I know you live in South America. I know you live in Asia. I know you live in Africa. I know you live in the islands. But if you're a believer in the Lord Jesus Christ, that may be a place where you physically live, but your citizenship is in heaven. Your citizenship is in heaven. Glory to God, right? So if my citizenship is in heaven, then I act, I behave, I live accordingly. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I live accordingly. And what really matters has not changed, right? Hallelujah. Um, we are joint heirs with Jesus. There is no disruption. There is no break 
in my relationship and my fellowship with Jesus. I am a joint heir. You are a joint heir. We are connected and everything, listen, and everything Jesus has coming to him, we have coming to us. Whoa, that's a powerful statement. Think about it. Think about it. Everyone in the world cannot say that. You cannot say that if you have not received Jesus. Everything Jesus has coming to him, I have coming to me because I'm joint, I'm connected. If you are married, many of you have joint bank accounts. Whatever's in the account, we got equal access. <laughs> right? Don't play with that joint account, right? We have equal access access. Well, the Bible says that you and I are joint heirs. We are connected to Jesus. And if I'm connected to Jesus, whatever he has coming to him, I have coming to me. Glory to God. I'm reminding us of that tonight. Hallelujah. We are complete in him. Thank you, Father. We are complete in Jesus. You and I are complete. I am not looking for anyone on Instagram to make me complete. I am not looking or searching for any influencer to complete me. I am not looking for anyone on the dating site to complete me. Watch this. I am not looking for Pastor Roland to complete me. I am complete in him. <laughs> Men and women of God, believers, you better declare this tonight. Put it in the chat. I am complete in him. But he said, I don't have this and this. I am complete. What does it mean to be complete? Nothing missing, nothing broken, nothing needed. I am complete in him. You are good enough. You are more than enough. You are great just like you are because you are complete in him. Stop trying to get the vlogger to make you complete. Stop asking the blogger to make you complete. Hallelujah. I am complete in him. You are complete in him. And we said that everything Jesus has come to him, I have come to me. Well, why is that? Because um, I have been crucified with Christ. Now that word crucified or crucifixion was a certain type of death. Mm. Crucifixion was a certain type of death, right? Jesus died the death of crucifixion. Now watch this. A crucifixion was not just something just um, particular to Jesus because in that day, that was a way that they killed people. There were many people who were crucified, but only one person got up. Many people died the death of a crucifixion, but Jesus got up and I was crucified. I died that type of death with him. Pastor Marisa, how can you say this? Because the Bible says, glory to God, that when God created Adam, you and I, all of humanity was in Adam. And so when Adam transgressed, he passed that transgression onto us. How could I get that transgression? That was over 2,000 years ago. When Adam transgressed, he passed it to me because I was in him. I'm part of humanity. I was in Adam. Just like Adam passed on sin to Marisa, so Jesus passed on, hallelujah, deliverance, sanctification, righteousness, freedom from the curse of the law, and healness, uh, uh, healness, <laughs> health and healing, uh, 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 prosperity, abundance, soundness of mind. He passed that on to me in that crucifixion. I was in Adam when he transgressed. I was in the second Adam, who is Jesus, when he died the death of a crucifixion. I was crucified with Christ. Somebody better let me know if that's your testimony as well. I was crucified with Christ. And because I was crucified with Christ, I am alive with Christ. This life I live, this is not the life of my own. I am alive in Christ. You, as a believer, are alive in Christ. I don't feel it's not based on what we feel, it's not based on what we're experiencing, it's not based on what we see. We are alive in Christ. This was a spiritual transaction. I am alive in Christ. So I remind myself today, Father, I'm alive in you. Father, thank you, Father God. I've been crucified with Christ. Father, I reign with one Christ Jesus. Father, I've been seated in heavenly places with Christ Jesus. Get back to our confessions. Get back. Put it in the chat. Get back to our confessions, right? The Bible says we overcome by the blood of the Lamb 
Jesus already shed the blood. That part is done. And we have a conjunction word. The conjunction word is and, and by the word of our testimony. Let the word of God be your testimony. So now we've got to do our part. I'm talking to myself as well. We've got to do our part. And now I've got to declare my testimony. I'm alive in Christ. I am complete in him. I am more than enough. He has made me more than enough. I will live and not die and declare the works of God. Father, we thank you according to Psalm 91, 16. With long life, you'll satisfy me and show you your salvation. Why? And I had the enemy, I'm, ta I'm talking because I know what I experienced today. And so the enemy said, you, you sure you want to say that? You sure you want to declare that? You see what's going on. Father, according to Psalm 91, 16, you promise to satisfy me with long life and show me your salvation. Get back to declaring the word of God. We are free from condemnation. What is condemnation? Shame guilt. I, I got an opportunity to visit a loved one yesterday who um, is shamed regarding some decisions that he has made in life. And so I got a chance to pray with him. And I thank you, Father God, that you have made every believer free from any guilt, any shame, any condemnation. I'm free from it. Glory to God. You can't shame me. I'm free from condemnation, right? We have been reconciled. Hallelujah. We have been reconciled to God. What does it mean to be reconciled? We've been brought back in. I've been reconciled. You know what it is at the end of the month when you reconcile your checkbook, you make sure that every check that you wrote showed up in that bank account. And what was, was said in that bank account is what's said on, on that reconciliation. We have been reconciled. Hallelujah. What is said in my life is what's said in the word. And what's said in the word is what's said in my life. I have been reconciled to Christ. Glory to God. I am a match to the word and the word is a match to me. You better put that in the chat. Glory to God. I feel like running around my own house. I have been, re I've never seen that before. I am a match. Hallelujah. I've been reconciled. You have been matched. The word of God is matching your life and your life is a match to the word of God. We have been reconciled to God. We have been justified by faith. Hallelujah. You, uh, Christ Jesus, justified you. You don't have to justify yourself. You don't have to vindicate yourself. You don't have to do any of that. Jesus has justified us. I have been justified by Christ. I want every believer around the world, whatever language you speak in, I want you to get back, glory to God, because this is where our power is. I want you to get back to your confession. I want the body of Christ. I want the church, glory to God, the, 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 uh, the gathering of the believers to get back. When we are together, we need to declare the word of God together. We, When we are away from one another, we need to be declaring the word of God over our lives over our families and over our loved ones get back to the de declaration of the word of God. I am qualified to share in Jesus's inheritance. I didn't qualify myself. You didn't qualify yourself. Jesus qualified me. You and I are qualified to share in the inheritance. I said, whatever Jesus has coming to him, you and I have coming to us and he qualified us to share in that inheritance. We have four children and the fact that they are our children qualifies them for our inheritance. We are children of God. Hallelujah. We are children of God. Therefore, we have been qualified for the inheritance. Hallelujah. I am a fellow citizen with the saints of the household of God. Any believer, you are not my enemy. I am in fellowship. I'm a fellow citizen with the saints of God. And believers do not be embarrassed, do not be ashamed to be considered and to be called a believer, to be considered and to be called a saint. You didn't make yourself a saint. When you received Jesus, hallelujah, he qualified you as a saint. And that's why we don't sing certain things. And that's why we don't say certain things because I've got to be one or the other. I can't be a sinner who, uh, I, I, a saint is just a sinner who fell down. No, I'm one or the other either I'm a sinner or I'm a saint. Well, when I received Jesus Christ, he made me a saint. Glory to God. 
and I am a saint and I'm not ashamed. Paul said, I am not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ for it is the power of God unto salvation. So I'm not ashamed for you to call me a saint. I'm not ashamed for you to call me a believer. Glory to God. Thank you, Father God. We are significant. We are significant contributing members to the body of Christ. You are significant. You may be saying, I don't know the word enough. You are significant. Hallelujah. You are significant. You are not insignificant. That is a lie from the pit of hell. You and I are significant. Well, I don't have a big platform. You are a significant contributor, contributor to the body of Christ. You are significant. Wear your significance. Live in your significance. Don't uh, give in to the voice of the enemy that will try to downplay who you are in Christ. You are significant. God has made you as such. Hallelujah. We are the temple of the Holy Spirit. People of God, please. We are the temple of the Holy Spirit. My body is a temple. And if my body is a temple, I've got to watch what I do with the temple. I've got to watch what I put into the temple because this body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. Right now, we're a, a church building, a church edifice. If someone went and tag the walls, if someone went and did something, we would feel so bad. How could somebody do this to the edifice? How could someone do this to the house of God? Well, you ought to feel the same way about your temple. How could I do this to the temple of God? How could I put this in the temple of God? How can I do this? How can I take the temple of God there? You got to feel the same way about this temple. I am the temple of God. He made me that. Hallelujah. The temple of the Holy Spirit. We are the salt of the earth. And you guys know when we cook and we put salt on, salt brings out flavor. Salt. Um, um, I'm going to make up a word, saw tenderizes, right? You see how harsh and coarse the world is now? The world is in need of salt. We are the salt. This is a part of the responsibility that uh, Pastor Rola is talking about. I have a responsibility to be salt. I need to tenderize some relationships. I need to tenderize the atmospheres that I go into, harsh and coarse and uh, vindictive and all of the, I'm, I'm the salt, I'm the tenderizer. You got, I didn't even realize it's 658. Okay, so you hear Pastor Marisa tonight, I want you to hear my heart. All over the world, I want you to hear my heart. Get back to the confession of the word of God. Get back to the believing of the word of God. And because I believe it, I say it. We love you tonight. I want every single person watching live or um, if you're watching the replay, I want you to sow into the word of God. Give your five, give 10, give 20, give 100, whatever it is. I want you to sow it. Why? Because when we sow into the word of God, that's another act. Of I believe in it. I'm sowing in it because I believe in what, what's being said. And I'm sowing in it as an act of faith. I'm, I'm turning on that switch of faith again. Lord, let me get back to the confession of the word of God. I'm talking about you guys like with a vengeance. I'm serious. Get back to the declaration of the word of God. I'm going to put it up there for you. Um, these are the ways to give. I want to announce tonight, hey, 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 about four more ways are coming um, for uh, to make it easier for you guys to give, to be uh, more convenient for you. So um, you have about mm, maybe another two or three more weeks um, with these ways only. But then we're going to add about four more. So tonight, I want you to make it your business to sow into the word of God tonight. I heard the word of God. Uh, Father God, you are still, and you fill in the blank, you are still who you are. Say you are. You are still who I need you to be. You are still the healer. You are still the miracle worker. You are still the one who raises from the dead. You are still my keeper. You are still my provider. You are still my protection. You are still my help. Whatever it is, you fill in the blank. We're going to sow into the word that he is still. And the word of God still works. And what really matters 
has not changed. A thousand may fall at my side and 10,000 at my right hand, but it shall not come nigh my dwelling. It's time to sow. We're sowing the faith. Remember every financial seed, it may leave your hand or your bank account, but it will not leave your life. It will rebound in your life. I declare tonight 100 fold in the mighty majestic name of Jesus. I come into agreement with you right now that whatever seeds you sow in the mighty name of Jesus, it will bring forth a harvest in your life, a harvest of ideas, a harvest of money, uh, ways to make money, a harvest of restored relationships, a harvest of health to you and yours, a harvest of sound. And I feel the Holy Ghost, a harvest of peace in the mighty name of Jesus, a harvest to our lives in the majestic name of I'm going to sow when I get up uh, in the mighty name of Jesus. You know how we do it here. You know how we do it here. Glory to God. Let me see how I get back. How do I get back? Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you, Jesus. How do I get back, Lord? I'm trying, guys. Hold on. I don't even know. Hold your hands up. Listen to my voice. I don't know how to get back. Hold your hands up. Declare after me. Say, these hands are anointed to harvest, to gather, and to reap on assignment. And everything these hands touch prospers in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Man, glory to God, Lord, help me. Show me how to get back, Lord. <laughs> Thank you, Father. Whew, I found it, guys. Yikes, I found it. Wonderful, right? Did you make that declaration over your hands? Tonight, you've heard the word of God. You're watching the um, live. You are watching the replay. I trust every person that was on live. You hit your share button. Share it, share it, share it. Let's get the word of God out. You want to be a believer. The Bible says to receive Jesus. Quite simple. Romans 10, 9 and 10. Believe in your heart, the Lord Jesus, and that God raised him from the dead. You shall be saved, rescued. You ready to receive him tonight? Pray this prayer with me. Say, Father God, I come to you in the name of Jesus. I believe Jesus Christ is your son and that Jesus gave his life for me. Father, I believe you raised Jesus from the dead for me. I ask you to forgive me of my sin. Wash me, cleanse me, and receive me as your own. I accept Jesus as my Savior and Lord in Jesus' name. Amen. You're in the family of God. You just move from a creation of God to a child of God. Welcome to the family of God. I want you to do one thing for me. I want you to send us a text. The text should read hashtag I am saved. Yeah, let me see if I can find it. <laughs> hashtag I am saved. I mean, Pastor Roland left me. Good. Hashtag I am saved. Watch, you watching the replay? Go ahead, do it. Wherever you are. Glory to God. God sees it. God knows your heart. Come on, send it. Text hashtag I am saved. Send it to the number 54244. Follow the prompts. We have a book for you. It's called God's Promises for Your Every Need. We want to get it out to you because we want to be a part of you getting uh, your confession, finding out what Jesus has made available to you, growing in your relationship with Father God. If you are in Bakersfield, California, and you don't have a church home, we invite you to connect, join uh, Compassion Christian Center, we are a Bible-believing, Bible-teaching church, and every believer needs to be connected to a Bible-believing, Bible-teaching church. If you live elsewhere, find a Bible-believing, Bible-teaching church, get connected, and grow, grow, grow. I mean, make it your business to grow. Be on assignment to grow. I'm Pastor Marisa with Compassion Christian Center in Bakersfield, California. It's been my uh, distinct privilege to be with you tonight. The Holy Ghost is moving. It's him that's tugging at your heart. It's him that you sense um, moving in your spirit, saying, yeah, get back. Get back to that confession. Get back to declaring the words of life. Get back. Get back to uh, creating, creating and commanding your morning. Get back. 
Don't let a day go by that we do not command our mornings. Don't let a day go by that we don't make our confessions aloud. Don't let a day go by that we're not quiet before the Lord. Let's get back. The Bible says he who knows to do and does not do for that person is sin. We don't want to. Um, God has given us this information. God, is, what did I do, guys? Oh, Lord Jesus. God has shown us what we need to do, and we're going to get back. I'm going to stop because I've done a whole lot tonight. I love you. We look forward to seeing you. If you're local, come join us. 9.30 a.m. Pacific Standard Time, 1034th Street, Bakersfield, California. You know who we are. Compassion. We are love in action, and we are fueled by faith. God bless you.